to the stage, um, Rachel Kotarski, Francis Madden, and Torsten uh, when I find him, um, but we'll get started. <laughs> Um, we'll get started without him. Uh, our speakers today all come from the British Library, um, so I will uh, take no more of your time and uh, hand over to Rachel. Thanks, Brian. And Torsten, if you say something in the chat, it'll be easier for Brian to find you. Um, so hello, everyone. I'm Rachel Katarski. I'm Head of Research Infrastructure Services at the British Library. Um, Francis, will, Francis and Torsten will be joining me on the stage for the discussion as we get further on. Uh, but to start with, I am uh, going to talk about a bit of the work that we did towards the tail end of the Freya project. And although uh, we are all from the British Library, we are, oh dear, don't use the wheel, I should click. Um, we are very much uh, talking about some of the later results from the Freya project. So for those of you who weren't aware of Freya previously, it was a three year project to look at how we um, further enhance persistent identifier infrastructure across Europe, um, increase its usage and integration, uh, increase the integration of persistent identifiers. Uh, so the work that you will uh, possibly have seen uh, on PID graphs previously, um, it, at Pidapalooza was part of this, but also actually all of the Freya partners throughout that period were doing a lot of work across the community, working to build, provide uh, a kind of independent but reassuring and community building voice across the persistent identifier community. We had an ambassador program, we did lots and lots of events. Um, and towards the end um, of the second year of the project, so in December 2019, we were starting to think about what the legacy of the Freya project would be when it finished a year later. We had that discussion actually at the British Library in December 2019, uh, and we instantly took that idea to Pidapalooza the following month. So it was quite a short uh, turnaround time. Um, we pulled, um, sorry. I've got my slides in the wrong order. Um, so yes, the project actually did finish in November, um, but we want to look right now at how we continue to maintain an active voice for persistent identifiers now that the project has finished. And actually, what are the things that, if we pull together people to maintain the active voice and be a champion for the PID community, um, is there a space for that? Actually, what, what could an organization in that area actually do? So having discussed it at the British Library in November, uh, December 2019, we took it to Pinapalooza in 2020 in Lisbon. Um, we were too late for the main programme because we'd obviously started discussing this idea quite late. So we pulled together a little side uh, breakfast meeting. Uh, lots of people got up very early uh, in Lisbon to attend this meeting. I was not there. Um, so for anyone who missed breakfast or were dragged out of bed particularly early that morning, you can blame Torsten later when he appears on stage. Um, but actually there was a lot of interest still from people in the room in this idea of uh, what at the time was called uh, a PID Federation, um, and we'll come on to the name and why it's crossed out in my titles uh, later on. But actually, just from that little kind of initial group of people in a room, uh, bleary eyed, there wasn't quite the focus that we had expected of, oh, we know exactly what, uh, what could happen in this space. So then what we did is we took that question of what could this activity look like into the Freya project um, and we wanted to go and ask the community what they thought. Um, so we got Josh Brown in as a consultant to do a piece of work for us on this to, to answer some of the questions on you know, what the community think of this idea, what ideas they had for activities that could take place. Um, and actually, what we couldn't do because we didn't have the time all the money to do it was in the Freya project is do a, a really wide cast of what the very broad global PID community thought. So what we had to do is pull in some uh, friendly folks that we knew who would be interested in this area into semi-structured interviews, give a few people questionnaires, run a few focus groups to really get their ideas on what a PID federation as it was called at the time could actually do. And we wanted to embrace diversity of opinion, but as I said, we didn't have the time to go globally, but I think also because we didn't still yet have a focus on what a PID federation could provide the community, if we went to a global community with a blank piece of paper, we could get all kinds of results. So we wanted to be inclusive, but we didn't want to you know, boil the, the ocean on this, um, but we wanted to get lots of buy-in 
from the beginning as well. So that's that's the kind of approach we took and why it was a little bit of a closed process to start off with. So what did we find? Um, here are just really high level summary uh, bullet points on what we found. Josh's report and uh, the final Freya reports are all available. Uh, we can pop links in there and I can see Josh is there as well. Hello. Um, so thank you for that. We, I just don't have the time to go into all the findings. Um, but I think what you can see, even from this short list of five bullet points, is that even these feel uh, there's a little bit of contradiction in the approach that that small uh, set of folks we went to speak to at first had. So, you know, they don't want too much overhead or complexity. There shouldn't really be a new kind of legal organisation. Um, but actually, activity needs to be capable and resourced to deliver solutions. And it's not necessarily an easy task to be able to fit those two findings um, together. It's not impossible, but it's going to create, uh, it's going to involve some creative uh, thinking. Um, and I think that if we boil down these findings, the priorities that we see are topics of inclusion, communication and interoperability. So what we can say is that these are um, the kind of yeah the, the the priorities that we need to look into in terms of activities and you know a, a minimum viable service that any activity could offer to the community so essentially this was a small scale piece of research but it has given us uh, possibly more questions <laughs> than it has done answers which is absolutely fine i think we were all pretty much expecting that uh, but it has given us a bit of direction for the work that we need to go on and do next so one of the things we do need to do, especially in support of the communication and the inclusion, is actually go out for a really broad, open consultation to get more feedback on this idea. What we want to do is put together um, a straw doll or maybe a couple of straw dolls out to the community, let them pick them apart, put them back together into some a set of activities that the community can kind of gather around support and say this is these are the areas where we we could do with the support to help us move forward um, that work should be designed to be uh, truly globally inclusive uh, one of the things uh, and I think it was mentioned in a previous session yesterday is actually doing that work outside of the English language I think that Pidapalooza over the last um, just less than 24 hours has proved that this that there is interest and that it can be done um, and I think that also means, and it's something that I'm particularly sensitive about, is that, yes, the British Library is very much wanting to be involved in this, but I would also like to have more global partners really pushing this forward and not solely be led by the British Library. And we'd like to get more people helping us to, to push it forward, essentially. Um, so we're going to come to some questions that we have for you to help us push that forward. But one thing I wanted to mention is this uh, issue around the name. So when we put in the proposal for Pidapalooza, we were still calling it the PID Federation. One of the things that came out of Josh's research is that actually that name isn't really ideal. People aren't really sure what that means. We've done a bit of brainstorming uh, within the Freya project before it finished. And we much prefer the name PID Alliance. So any comments on the name are also appreciated. Um, but we'd be happy, happy for people to join our Rebel PID Alliance. Um, so that's it from me, but now I'm going to hand over to Francis, who can lead the discussion and kind of feedback on where we should go next, how we should try and push this activity forward to kind of really give a, give more of a voice to the community and a fulcrum of that. Yes, hi. Um, so as Rachel said, I'm Francis. Um, also from the British Library, and um, we've had quite a few Mentimeters um, over the course of Pitapalooza, and here's another one. Um, so Brian very kindly um, pasted the joining information, a link, and the code in the question bar, um, or the ask a question box. So you can navigate from there, or you could um, just go to menti.com on your mobile phone or another device if it's easier. And um, the first question we have for, for you today is to find out um, what do you think of the um, proposed next steps? Um, so uh, the steps Rachel outlined around an open consultation and um, developing, you know, straw dolls. Um, we'd just like to hear um, what you think um, about that idea. 
to start off with. So I can see people are starting to vote, which is great. Um, so we'll just give a couple of minutes. For those of you who are saying it's good, but I'm not convinced, it would be great to hear in the chat uh, what might convince you. So those sounds great and go ahead, but not being convinced are kind of almost neck and neck at this point. Okay. Right, that seems to be leveling off. So I will move on to the next question, which is, is, is anyone on this call interested in joining the consultation? Now, we just want, the reason we post this question such as it is, is that we'd like to get an idea of if anyone is interested. And if you genuinely are interested in yes, sign me up as the two people who have already voted are, um, you will need to contact us directly. So please do so either on Slack or um, or via email, or you can let us know in the chat if you're happy um, for everyone else to know. Um, so oh, it's great to see so much interest in this. Um, yeah, brilliant. Um, so yeah, please do let us know um, who all of these uh, blue yes sign me up people are. We're delighted. Um, I've just seen in the chat there a suggestion to form a Slack channel. Um, I'm not sure we've got the power to do that, to be quite honest with you, but perhaps uh, we could have a thread in the Q&A or um, you could just find us on the Slack directly and, and message us. I'm not quite sure, to be perfectly honest about how these things work. Um, I think we could also potentially uh, use the PID forum for this as well. And if you want to find out more about the PID forum, Francis will also be uh, in a session about that later on today. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, but yeah, but just in the first instance um, after this session, um, just, just let us know. Um, okay, um, I am going to move on to the next question. Um, and we'll leave this one up for a couple of minutes because um, this is just a chance um, for anyone who has any views on the research that was conducted earlier um, last year. Um, if you'd like to share any thoughts about that at this point, um, now is an opportunity. So we've had various consultation on this, you know, through webinars and um, various other forums, but we just wanted to, um, if anyone wasn't able to participate in that uh, previously, um, now is a chance to give any comments on, um, on the findings of the research so far. Um, also, this might be, as we'll leave this up for um, a bit longer for open comments. Um, I don't know, Torsten, if you want to say anything at this point. Um, not specifically um, on it. I think one thing that I have noticed, though, in the in the chats that someone said it might be useful to um, maybe after we've gone through the Mentimeter, bring the slide back up on the proposed next steps. Um, they are fairly general. I mean, what, what struck me overall, and having been sort of the, at least partly the instigator of this of last year's breakfast is, um, there seems to be a widely shared view, not universally, but widely shared view that um, some level of coordination and collaboration in our community beyond what we're doing, that's more formalized than what we currently have is useful. But there's a quite diverse range of views for what these are and on whether they actually justify any any more formal structure. And I think that's been the interesting challenge. Um, and we haven't quite sort of gotten to that point. And it may seem slightly counterintuitive that having that level of consultation that maybe wasn't uh, entirely conclusive that we propose a second level of consultation. But it's uh, this may be one of the cases where increasing diversity might actually help us to getting a clearer view. And I think that was a clear steer that came from the research that uh, Josh has made. 
Just um, addressing one set of the questions, there's a few people asking about who was involved in the consultation, just to get an idea of, you know, where some of these thoughts uh, came from. Uh, and just to say it was it was broad. So we had PID providers to PID users, infrastructure, uh, general infrastructure folks, uh, funders. So we tried to get representation from uh, a number of stakeholder groups from across the PID community. Um, and were there any really critical voices? I think there were definitely critical comments. Um, I don't think every single voice was wholly critical, if that makes sense, I think. Um, and Josh can um, disagree if I'm wrong, um, but the, there were there were critical statements, but generally lots of people found something that would be of interest and use to their particular kind of point of view and role in the community. Um, Rachel and Torsten, would one of you like to um, offer any comment around the, um, the comment we've had here about what the problem that's being solved here and what like, is there a pressing problem that's being solved? Well, um, I think what we've seen in the consultation is that um, there is a view across the community that, that we have a set of, of challenges or problems. Um, what we haven't, I think, really nailed is what the problem is. I, for example, a while ago thought uh, one problem might be um, sort of something that's a mix of the disaster recovery persistent access uh, on all the metadata that's generated. Um, that maybe comes from sort of working in a library point of view. I think the steer that we certainly had, or that I certainly had, is that this isn't so much a problem. Um, but there is, I think, a question on sustainability of the organizations um, and working together when it comes to sort of new communities and, and new pits that come up. Is there, for example, a mechanism or are there some community guidelines to, um, that will help those who think about new pits to learn from the expertise of those who've done a really good job um, setting up pit organizations? That's one theme that keeps coming up. And I think that, again, looking from a, from a library perspective, seems to be quite relevant. There was another point that's been raised repeatedly, and that is um, communication and information sharing, both within the community, beyond the usual, usual suspects and what these are, and finding ways of not lobbying, that doesn't work for many paid organizations, but influencing and being engaged in a coordinated dialogue with funding bodies and others. So a lot of what I've heard of in terms of ideas that point forward um, are linked into how can we develop the overall field, how can we identify areas that aren't properly supported and coordinate meaningful efforts um, to sort of close some gap in the sector provision and do this in an open and sustainable way that's inclusive and not focused on a, a small group of big players, but lets, has room for others to come in. That's one look. I appreciate there are others who would take a different emphasis. And I think the challenge that we had in this piece of work is amongst the options, find those that the community most broadly thinks would add value. That's one take on it. Okay. Um, Rachel or others might have a slightly different one. Okay, we've got some really nice comments coming through in the chat as well that I can I can see there, and we've had some very useful comments here on the on the Menti. Um, just to say, I saw a comment in the chat about Slack and using Slack. Um, I just meant express interest via Slack, and we'll take the conversation offline after that. So just um just as a means of capturing um, interest sort of while we're all here and um, at Pitapalooza virtually, so to speak. Um, okay, as the comments have uh, seem to have leveled out on this question, um, I just want to go on to um, one of the final questions, which some people have already voted on, obviously, which is um, around the name. Um, and there does seem to be some quite clear consensus here um, around working out what we're um, what we're doing, which is um, definitely um, good feedback. Um, another question which we don't have on the Menti, but if um, anyone wants to um, provide a comment in chat, um, as we've said, we're keen to um, 
conduct you know a truly open um, ex more extended consultation than what we had a chance to do previously and um, for that we are looking for some um, we will be looking for some funding support for that if anyone has any ideas about um, places to um, source funding such as that um, or any suggestions around that that would be very welcome as well Great. Just to note a couple of questions that have popped up uh, in questions and answers. So uh, Katrina's asking, given Ed's talk this morning, could the PID Alliance also help support an understanding of open metadata and open infrastructure? Um, and I think, yes, we're, we're kind of open to all the needs that are articulated within the community and trying to work those into the straw doll to come up with, as I think I mentioned, a kind of minimum viable set of activities um, that we could put out there as part of the consultation to see um, where the need is strongest, essentially. So I think that's something that could definitely uh, go on the list. Uh, Katrina then also asked, could the Alliance help coordinate raising awareness among funders and governments? And I think again, yes. And, and that's something that came out a bit more strongly from uh, this initial um, set of research and investigations actually as well so that I think that should definitely be on the list. Yeah just sort of adding to this I think uh, I, I sort of mentioned that that funder awareness I mean we had, a, we had a good discussion last year and it was made clear lobbying is really problematic but awareness raising and sharing information is useful. The, the one caution that I would have is I think what we first need to work out is before we think more broadly about open infrastructures what's the unique thing that this initiative could do to help the PID space. Um, once we know that, I think we can then get into a position where we can think how this supports the wider open agenda. Um, I would prefer personally for us to do that PID focus step first and be really clear, because otherwise the risk is that we, before we know what the core thing is, we start moving into too many different directions. And I appreciate there are already quite a few initiatives that look at supporting open infrastructures. We can probably have more of those too because it's a critical topic, but the if it's useful for the PID community or for enhancing PIDs overall, I think that needs to be the focus of the next step that we take. Great. Okay, so that's, um, I'm going to uh, stop sharing now because um, that was it on the Menti. Um, so we've got, um, I think just about a minute left. Um, are there any final questions or comments from anyone? I've just seen uh, Francoise's comment on the workshop with representatives from the somatic European clusters. So um, that was essentially the Freya final event where we brought together various uh, European uh, infrastructures with an interest in PIDs uh, all in one room, essentially to talk about those topics. Um, and thank you for the good feedback. And I think, yes, we should look at how we can continue to have those discussions moving forward, uh, given that the Freya project has now stopped. Great, thank you all. I think um, that generated quite a lot of chatter and quite a lot of questions. Um, I hope that we can continue that discussion over on the Slack channel um, later on. I'm sure that you're all up for continuing that. Uh, just a final question, I guess, what what are the immediate next steps um, for you? So I think it is uh, trying to find people who want to collaborate with us on this and especially on a kind of global level. So other other national or international uh, bodies to work with, um, trying to find people who are interested in funding the work uh, and then we can start coming up with uh, some of the straw dolls that we can use um, to take the consultation further. I would say those are the main two steps. Thank you very much indeed. Look forward to hearing more about it. Um, we're going to take a very quick break now. Um, more questions, as I said, over in the sessions Q&A uh, on, on Slack. Um, Rachel, Francis, Torsten, thank you very much for your time. It was, it was a very interesting presentation and a lot of good feedback from the audience. So um, uh, fantastic. Thanks so much. <laughs>